Welcome to another episode of In Search of Santa Cruz. Today we go in search of the region's historic lime industry. Each day, thousands of people pass through the entrance to the University of California, Santa Cruz. Although it is one of the youngest campuses in the UC system, there is plenty of history here. In fact, it's hard to miss. Tucked away in the campus forests and meadows are plenty of clues to the past. But the best place to learn about this history is at the Cowell Lime Works Historic District, located at the campus main entrance. With just a little imagination, one can step back to a very different time, long ago, when people manufactured lime here. In 1853, two enterprising 49ers, Isaac Davis and A.P. Jordan, set about burning lime at this location. The lime was made by quarrying local lime rock and heating it in kilns. The 2000 degree temperatures converted the calcium carbonate of the rock into calcium oxide or lime. In the 19th century, Lime was essential to many types of construction, just as cement is today. It was used to make mortar for building fireplaces, chimneys, and brick buildings. It was also used to make plaster and whitewash. The finished lime was packed in barrels and hauled down Bay Street to a wharf. There, the product was loaded onto ships destined for ports up and down the California coast. Santa Cruz Lime had a reputation for high quality and played an especially important role in the development of San Francisco in the decades after the gold rush. In 1865, Henry Cowell bought Jordan's share of the business and later Davis's as well. The Cowell Company made lime here into the 1920s and in Santa Cruz County until 1946. The historic district preserves the most complete 19th century lime manufacturing establishment in California. Let's begin our tour at the cookhouse, now the university admissions office. Built in the 1880s, this is where the lime workers ate their meals. Breakfast was served at six in the morning, dinner around six in the evening. An old wood-burning stove still resides in the former kitchen. On the hillside across the street are some of the small cabins where the workers lived. There was no electricity or indoor plumbing in those days, and only a wood stove for heat in the winter. Three to four men slept in each cabin. Many were immigrants from Ireland and Switzerland, and later from Italy and Portugal. For some of these men, this was their first job in America. Typical duties included chopping wood, breaking and hauling rock, stoking the kilns, and making barrels. Typical pay, a dollar a day. This building is called the Cooperage, and was most likely constructed in 1869. It is where redwood barrels were assembled and the empty barrels stored, waiting to be filled with lime. In 1868, Davis and Cowell shipped an average of 1,000 barrels of lime per week. The district preserves four lime kilns, all built in the latter half of the 19th century. The rock was loaded from the top and the finished lime removed through the narrow four-foot high doorways at the bottom. The entire process, loading, firing, cooling, and unloading, took 10 to 12 days. Each load produced up to 1,200 barrels of lime.
Redwood, cut in eight-foot lengths and split, served as fuel. The hungry kilns burned 70 to 140 cords of wood during each firing. Other historic structures include this hay barn, probably built in the 1860s, a horse barn, now a theater for live performances, and this barn, where oxen were kept, now offices. This building was originally the blacksmith shop, and this is where explosives were stored for blasting rock in the quarries. The former carriage house is also offices. This is where the cowls kept their fine carriages and horses. The ranch house dates from 1864. The Jordan and later the Cowell families called it home. It is now the University Women's Center. Visitors to the Cowell residence pass through this beautiful gateway, reconstructed by the university based on a vintage photograph. Because of its significance to regional and California history, the Cowell Lime Works Historic District was recently placed on the National Register of Historic Places. With the help of private donations, work has begun on preserving the historic buildings and structures not already put to other uses. Student interns and community volunteers are meticulously restoring the cabins to their appearance a century ago. For the students, this is hands-on history. They record information on how the cabins were built, unearth clues about the former inhabitants, and learn restoration techniques. Other goals include restoring the cooperage, hay barn, and lime kiln. Today, the quarries are quiet. The kilns, cold and dark. Banana slugs gently creep down paths once trampled by ox teams. But history here is coming alive, and ever so slowly, revealing its secrets. <laughs>